could only sing as good as you played, that'd be wonderful. Well, as the preacher was so fond of saying and earned this tea fast, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Don't be afraid to speak up, and it's, it's, it's good to have you back out this evening. And haven't we had an absolutely beautiful day? Amen. Uh, I, we don't know the lady who had her home burned down uh, in behind us on Reynolds Road this, this afternoon. But uh, be much in prayer for that family because when we we drove by it on the, on the way over here, and uh, some people was already that might be a family I don't know, but some people was already going through the remains of it, pulling metal that scrap metal out to, to sell it, and uh, they lost uh, a family pet in the barn. The dog was tied outside and couldn't escape, and uh, I think a couple of vehicles were destroyed as well. But uh, I was concerned about the elderly gentleman that uh, that we've seen there over the years. And, uh, I've never did see him in a pair of pants. Uh, he always had on pajama bottoms. I don't know whether he was getting ready to go to bed or he just got out of bed or, or he was ready to bed any time. He always had on a pair of pajama bottoms. And uh, he waved at you every time that you went through. He didn't make any difference. Early in the morning, late in the evening, he'd be sitting on the front porch and he'd throw that one hand up as you went through. Never did know who was him, but I was concerned about maybe that he was uh, uh, in the fire this scene, but I come to find out he had passed away a couple of years ago. I knew I hadn't seen him in a while, but he passed away a couple of years ago. But uh, remember that family. And uh, don't know whether uh, Brother Bobby got him a bed this morning or not, but, but we're still. Did you get one, Bobby? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, we're still praying about that. But Brother Bobby still needs a bed. If you know of anyone that has a bed they need to get rid of or won't get rid of, uh, he don't need a king size bed, just him. And, uh, I guess a half bed or a full size bed would be good with him, Bobby. Yeah. All right. So we'll make that a matter of prayer then. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. And they send him off another week. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Need that. It's hard to sleep without a bed, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Recliners is all right, but you better be a hurt if you sleep in a recliner. <laughs> you get used to I can sleep good in a recliner until Mary Plastic Man says it's good to have snoring. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me go over these uh, announcements here just few minutes. Uh, I can't remember whether the preacher takes a prior request on Sunday nights or Wednesday nights. Is it Wednesday evening he does it? I know he does it on Wednesdays. But does anyone have any prior requests? Yeah, and it's good to see you out this evening. It's good to be here. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, well, I tell you what, I think I'll save all these uh, prayer requests that, that I went over this morning twice on the, for Wednesday evening. And if you happen to have any, any then uh, mention to uh, myself or Sam Hill, we'll, we'll put them on here for, uh, for the prayer lesson. The preacher coming back. I don't, he's coming back when next Sunday. He'll be back next Sunday. So just pray for his uh, safe journey. Uh, and I, I apologize to you. I'm not, uh, I'm not the song leader nor the song leader's son, but I guess I can lead the singing to the song leader cut. So <laughs> I, I am what I am, so you've got what you've got. That's it. Then, then we got it. But I, I do. Uh, I do just uh, appreciate you coming back out there. And uh, sometime or another, well, here in a few minutes, we're going to be singing uh, 257 in it, softly and tenderly. And uh, if you don't mind turning to, to that. Uh, this morning uh, was the first time that I have actually looked at uh, the bulletin and read the bulletin. 
And the heading up here on the right hand side of it says, Will you be the one to win one in 2021? Let me take just a few minutes to tell you a story about a, it's a true story. Uh, first thing here, we're going to have this here. There was a young, young man, his name was Billy, and he was in Ireland, and uh, late one evening, as it was drizzling rain, he heard a commotion, and he looked out in the ocean, and saw a ship had wrecked and crashed against the, some, some rocks that was underneath the water. And uh, it was like three or 400 yards. He could see the people jumping out of the ship. And he began to holler for help. Well, elderly gentlemen and <clears throat> stuff started gathering around. And they told him, said, you start gathering up firewood and so we can be able to see where uh, land is at. And we'll get a boat and go get it. So his mother came out and she said, what is it, Billy? He said, there's been a shipwreck. And said, I need to go out there and help him, Mommy. She said, no, you're not going. You're not going, Billy. I've done lost one son to the ocean. And I'm not about to lose another. Will vanished two years ago. And I'm not going to lose another tonight. So you stay here, Billy. Well, the men got a boat and they rowed out and as they came back in he met them at the shore and he said did you get everybody they said we got everybody but one person we couldn't get any more in the boat we got everybody but one so Billy took his little boat and shoved it out into the ocean his mother was screaming him, no Billy no no he paddled on out to the ocean and where his ship was at and he found this guy floating on the board and he loaded him up in his boat and he came back and as he was getting close to the shore his mama said oh thank God thank God Billy you come back you made it did you get him he said yes mama I did it's Will I've got Will with me. So I don't know which one is your will, but somebody somewhere needs a life right now. Amen. You need to go with us to it. Stand if you would, please, and we'll sing a song. <clears throat> Sing real loud because you didn't sing too loud this morning, so sing real loud and that way you kind of help drown me out. <laughs>
Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to come back out this evening. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for each one that you're here today. Now, Lord, for the prayer request that we read on this morning, we ask you, Father, that you'll be attending, Lord, to each one of them. And Father, Bobby still needs that bed. And Lord, I pray that you'd answer that prayer for him. And Lord, to get him a bed, Father, that he so desperately needs. We ask you, Father, you continue to watch over our pastor <coughs> because he's out traveling and visiting with family. Father, would you keep them safe from harm and not only safe, but Father, may they enjoy themselves and get some rest while they're gone in. We thank you so much, Lord, for your blessings and ask you, Father, to be with us this evening. Lord, would you be with our singers? He comes forward in a few minutes to sing. We ask you, Father, to be with Brother Mike, Lord, as he stands to bring your word in a few minutes. We ask you, Father, if you're running the blessings upon us, for it's in Christ's wonderful, 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 sweet and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, as I was telling you this morning, we got a, uh, got a special singer. And I believe that Brian. Yeah. Brian uh, my hand. Well, I'm, I'm proud of myself for remembering that name for a week. <laughs> Usually I can't do that good with a name. But Brother Mike, if you'll, or Brian, if you'll come on. And uh, this this gentleman here, he's from uh, Hughes Gap. Here. No, I, I live down here now. Oh, you live? Yeah, but you, that's where you were born and raised when on Mount Lennon. Yeah. <clears throat> Up there at Cove Creek, isn't it? Hughes Gap. That's right close to the North Carolina line, ain't it? Yeah, I'm I'm a mixture between both of them. You're a mixture between both of them. <laughs> yeah. You're a Tar Hill volunteer then, ain't you? Yeah. <laughs> brother Mike had a ill or brother back home up there. He had a uh, brain tumor when he was fourteen years old. And, uh, by, the, by the grace of God then he was able to uh, have an operation and he came to bring us some ministering song this evening. <clears throat> Savior, gracious blood, 
It will heal you, mind and body. It will save your soul from sin. Amen. It will take you back to heaven where it all began. It will take you to the fire. It will take you to the flood. I'm talking about my Savior's fresh blood. It will save you. <clears throat> That's, that's all I would put on my heart right there. There's a few more verses. But you know, you know it says in Romans 12, 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord, which is your reasonable service. Amen. You know, the Lord, he, he, don't, <laughs> he don't look at our outward appearance, he looks at our heart. Amen. You know, it, it don't matter if we've been in church one day or one year. You know, that don't matter. You know, he, all he does it, he, he just expects us to worship and adore him Amen. and give Amen. him the praise Amen. and honor that he deserves. Yes. Thanks. share with us tonight for testimony of what the Lord's done for you. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Anybody? Anybody at all? Tell me about when you got saved. Anybody? One day you'll never forget. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen.
Jesus said, suffer the little children, but they did not come unto me. Amen. You know, there's no said age except the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, at age five, you might say, well, she, she didn't know what she was doing. Well, God brought tears to her eyes, and she's still with us. Amen. And she's born again to believe it. Never take her children for granted, folks, regardless of what age they are. They're a great understanding. I was going to share this a little later with you, but... Uh, uh, my dad passed away April the 5th, 1959. Just last week ago was the anniversary of his passing. I say passed away. Let me rephrase that. At the funeral last week, I said, uh, as far as again, believe it, they don't pass away. They just pass on. Amen. They pass from this life to another. But my dad passed away April the 5th, 1959. I was four and a half years of age. And uh, there's not a whole lot of things I remember about him. I remember he had a Bible and he was sick for a great period of his life, I assume, you know, as far as I know. But there's a little prayer that y'all probably know that he taught me at age four and a half, or before that, because he died when I was four and a half. And it goes, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Amen. How many remember that little prayer? Amen. So, you know, I was four and a half, but I remember that to this day. Amen. So, you know, matter of fact, the message I'm talking about tonight, I'm going to share with you tonight, it's along those lines. The most important thing we can do, folks, is get the Word of God in these children's hearts. The most important thing we can do. We were talking a while ago back there in the back, and we look around, and the younger generation are not being taught the Word of God. They're not being taught the things of God. They're not being taught what God can do. They're not being taught the importance of church and all that goes with it. They're not being taught that. And somehow we're missing out on that. And this generation, we wonder why things are in such a mess. It's because the generation come up, they're a generation that don't know God. As Brother Justin said, well, we can tell that. So uh, thank you for that testimony. That's wonderful. It's so wonderful. Somebody else, don't be, don't be bashful. God lays it on your heart. I want to thank the Lord for saving me March 50 years ago. Praise the Lord. So I just now was sitting here thinking about that. She was talking about how long it's been since she's been saved. And she <clears> thought, <throat> I got saved when I was 16 years old. Oh my, it's been 50 years. So I just thank the Lord for saving my soul. And I do remember that. Satan gives us promise, but you know, anyone else? Uh, my time's up to say a word. Go ahead, Jim. You know, it, it's a privilege to be here tonight. I was saved age 16. So I'm 73, so you do the math. About 52, 53 years I'm going along with that. And you know, through all of that, through the thick and thin, I've never been sorry about, about giving my life to the Lord Amen. and trying Amen. to serve Him. You talked about these young kids. Kathy and I talked 
shown the church here for several years, <coughs> and a couple of other churches, and we've seen a lot of children saved by six, seven, eight year old house. But what thrills you the most is when those children get grown, like a girl that Kathy has led the Lord here in children's church. And uh, she told us this. She said, Miss Kathy, do you remember me? I don't think she really did. She got to talking. She said, Why, you was one led me to the Lord in Amen. children's church. Amen. You know, uh, you put a lot of time into it. Not saying nothing about it, but when something like that comes by, you know, and it lets you know that you was an influence on their life, uh, it makes a big difference. Amen. And it, it's something to praise the Lord about. Amen. And uh, our daughter got saved when she was five. Amen. Our son got saved when he was six. Wow. They're both serving the Lord, working in the church, they raising their children in church. And so just like the Bible says, you know, uh, raise up a child in the way it should go. When it's old, it will not depart from it. They might stray a little bit along the way, but they're going to come right back. Amen. Amen. And I thank the Lord for this little girl sitting up here playing the piano. You know, I taught her in Sunday school <laughs> way back when. I ain't going to tell her. I told my age, I ain't going to tell her. <laughs> but, uh, she's, now, she's a sweetheart. Sandy, Sandy means a lot to me. Amen. And uh, y'all got, got a great piano player. Amen. A great person. Amen. You can tell with that. Anyway, uh, it's good to be here. Good to see all my old friends again. And uh, uh, sometimes it's hard to get away from your old church. I had to tell Preacher Bill this morning, I won't be here tonight. I'm going to go down and listen to a buddy of mine. I haven't seen in about 20-some years. Thank you. Yeah, me and Jim used to work together. I remember lunchtime, we'd have Dr. J. Vernon McGee on. Yeah. And, uh, and that's quite a testimony. And he was one of my favorite Bible teachers also. You mentioned Sister Sandy there, you know. When we first come to this church, her, Brother Jeff, Brother Kenny, and Sister Margaret, and uh, Sister Ruth James, you know, they just made you feel so well. And the rest of you did too. But they stick out in my mind. And, uh, you know, that's what it's all about. If you if you don't feel welcome first time you come to church, you don't want to come back. Okay? But if you feel the love of God there and that you're wanted, oh, you want to come back. Amen? You want to come back. Somebody else? Anyone else? All right. If you will, turn with me to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. How many has got your sword tonight? Lift it up high. Amen. Amen. The most important book that's ever been written. Amen. I don't normally read. I don't know if I'll have time to read all I wanted to read. But really to put it together the way I wanted to. Uh, I want to read quite a bit of scripture and point out quite a few things. So with God's help of the Holy Spirit, we may have to condense it. Okay? But uh, there's so much here. And such an example. You take Daniel and his three friends, they're outstanding examples for every young person and for every adult, as far as that goes, okay? Outstanding examples. And uh, we want to look at that tonight, and I believe it fits right into where we're at today. As we mentioned this morning in our country, I didn't ever think I'd come to the place that I'd see that. You just about have to be awful careful about what you say because everything you say offends somebody. Amen? But something we should never allow us to not say what we should say, and that's about the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done for us in the gospel. Because the Bible says the preaching of the gospel of them that perish is foolishness, but us that are saved is the power of God and the salvation. And one thing Satan would like to do, he'd like to muzzle the gospel. And uh, he will do whatever he can to do that. So I hate to see our nation headed down that road. And I hope that by God's grace somehow it will stop. But we're headed down that road, folks. We're headed down that road. And uh, they're trying to change everything. They've changed history. Trying to, And that's one thing that's wrong with the young people today. They don't know the history. They don't know the background. Okay? And when you forget history, uh, 
uh, you're apt to repeat it, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Let's once again bow our heads in prayer, if we may. Lord, we come to you again in prayer. Thank you for this service this evening. Thank you for the wonderful testimonies that have been shared here. And Lord, help us to realize, sometimes we look at children and think, well, they can't help comprehend that. But Lord, I believe the younger they get saved, the better off they are. So Lord, we just pray tonight, God, that you'll help each one of us that's saved and know Christ as their Savior to always be willing and anxious to share the gospel with whoever we have the opportunity to do so. Father, we thank you for this church. We thank you for the pastor. We thank you for the leadership. And Lord, we want to pray tonight. I know the prayer list, as Brother Don said this morning, many times we can't remember all of them. Lord, there's some that's in bereavement. There's some having a father that's facing surgery. There's some recovering from surgery. There's some having a father that, that needs your touch for healing. There's all kinds of needs, Lord. So, Father, we pray for each prayer request that been named and on this long prayer list. We ask God your will be done. But right now, may we quiet in our hearts and be attentive to the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. And we'll give you praise for it, for we ask it in Jesus' name. I'm going to read a couple of verses here and make a comment, and then we'll get on into the message. In Daniel chapter 3, now a lot of times we go to Daniel and uh, we think, well, we're going to speak on prophecy. Well, I don't want to necessarily speak on prophecy this evening, but um, when we look at the book of Daniel, that's another one of those books of this story in chapter 3 here. As we mentioned this morning, they want to attack the book of Genesis. Critics want to attack the book of Genesis and say it's a fairy tale and those things couldn't happen. But they do the same thing with Daniel and the men of line. They do the same thing, same thing with the three Hebrew children that uh, was put in the fiery furnace. And uh, so the book of Daniel, folks, it is uh, a book that's inspired of God and it's just as much of God's word. The stories are just as much true as anything else. Yeah. And we have to accept it as that, okay? And I have no problem at all. And the reason they can't accept it that, they want to limit God. God has no limit. Because man can't do these things, the Bible says there's nothing impossible with God. Amen? So let's read verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar, king, uh, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth there are six cubits, and he set it up in the plain of Jura, in the province of Babylon. And Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to uh, sent together, sent get together together. Now notice who he's gathered: the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, the king had set up. Now, if you remember back in, in chapter uh, 1 and chapter 2, Daniel made a great impression upon this king and upon those that, was a, that he was around and his three friends, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They made a, such an impact that uh, God allowed them to get in the position of authority. And, uh, and uh, uh, you read back there that Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and uh, he couldn't remember what it was. You remember that? When he had a dream, he couldn't remember what it was. And he put out an order for all the, the, the soothsayers and all the magicians and all those people to, to come and tell him what the dream was and also not what the dream was, but what the dream meant. Of course, they couldn't do that. To make a long story short, and don't have time to go back and look at it, but uh, they couldn't tell him what it was. And uh, uh, they said, there ain't no man can do that. They said, even the gods can't tell you what you dream. said, you tell us what you dream, and we'll tell you what the interpretation was. Well, the old king pretty smart. Okay, he was very smart. And he said, well, you know, a paraphrase, and he said, well, if I tell you this, he said, you can just make up anything. You can just tell me whatever you, you think. So he got so angry that uh, finally he said, uh, I'm going to kill if, uh, if the magicians and, and the soothsayers and, and uh, these cannot tell me what the dream is, I'm just going to have them all executed. Just have them all executed. Well, Daniel got word of it, if you remember. And uh, Daniel said, hey, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, let's, let's have a prayer meeting. They went and prayed about it. And he came back and he told uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, by God's grace and uh, 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 by the help of the Holy Spirit, that's the only way he done it. He's very plain on that. Of course, I'm paraphrasing this to get to the, to the 
uh, the main gist of the, the story. And he told all this, and he told the king what the dream was about, and told the king uh, what it meant. He said it's for the latter day. Okay. Well, if you remember now, the king had this dream and this uh, image that uh, had a golden head, and you remember it all, and it went on down to the feet of the, the clay, and the iron was mixed in that dream. So that impressed this old king, and he was very uh, overbearing, this king was. He, he, he didn't have much compassion for anybody, but anyhow, he had a lot of pride, had a lot of pride. And I believe that we get here, and he made this image. I think he was thinking about that image that God had given him that dream of, and he had this image made. In other words, he put himself up in a position to be worshipped. Now look with me how big this image was. The Bible tells it, and uh, it was uh, three score cubits uh, uh, breadth and six cubits uh, uh uh, wide, okay? So it was 90 feet, nine zero, 90 feet high and nine feet wide. And this image was to be worshipped, okay? This image was to be worshipped as we, we well know. And we see in verse 2 there, and the reason I pointed out there, all those was leaders. All those was positions of authority. And uh, those was people that he wanted to come and uh, to uh, recognize him and his position, his authority, and to be worshipped. And then you go on and you find we don't have time to read it all like I'd like to, okay? So look with me in verse 5. That at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sat, uh, sat buck, the sultry, the delsmer, and all kinds of music, ye shall fall down and worship the image, the golden image, that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. When this music played, they were to all fall down and worship. Well, if you go back and you study chapter 1 and chapter 2, you'll find there when Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach and Abednego, when the king wanted them to eat certain foods and had that certain food for them, that they refused to eat it. And because it was against what they had been taught. Okay, It was against the Jewish diet, okay? And also, that had probably had something related to the worship of idols. So, they would not eat that portion, if you remember. And they said, well, you just give us a, a vegetarian diet, and we'll eat the vegetarian diet. And by the way, they had three years. When the king went into a, a, a nation and they conquered it, they'd bring back the best and the, those that was a, a relative or descendants from the, the king and authority of that uh, country and bring them in and they had to be handsome okay they had to be good looking they had to be pretty smart they had to be wise they had to have an understanding they had to be able to sort things out and uh, so there was Daniel and Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and the Bible tells us that they refused to eat that but they had uh, a period of time I believe it was 10 days and they came back and the Bible says their counting was out, uh, done all the others' counting. In other words, they done a whole lot better. So they were allowed to stay on that diet. So what they done, they took a stand. They took a stand right there because of what they had been taught. Okay? And then, as a result of that, they got promoted. Then when Daniel told the, uh, the dream, uh, the interpretation of the dream to Nebuchadnezzar about what the dream was, and what it meant, then Nebuchadnezzar put Daniel in charge of the, the, the kingdom. Okay? And when he done that, he asked if he could put uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in a position of authority. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is, okay, Daniel was in a position of authority here. The other three were in a position of authority here. And we read there that he called for the governors and the, and the judges and the treasurers and all those. They were in that group of people, okay? And when they was in that group of people, I don't know how many there were, but there were many other Jews. No doubt there was many other Jews that was there that, that done that. But when they heard this music, they were to fall down and worship. Well, what did they do? What did they do? Well, we know the story of what they done. They refused to do that. Okay? They refused to fall down at the sound of that music. 
Why did they refuse to fall down at the sound of that music? Well, the reason they refused to fall down at the sound of that music, I'm going to ask the church, what is the first commandment that God gave the King commandment? Thou shalt have no other God before me. Amen? And what's the second? Make no image. Amen? No image. No image. And you can't, you're not to worship that image. When these young men was taken, it is believed that they were probably from the age of 11 to probably about 14. Okay? About the age of 11 to 14. They were taken, and listen to me very closely, they were taken to a foreign land at that young age, taken from their parents. They were taken uh, from Jerusalem to Baghdad. It's about 544 miles. And uh, I looked up, and if you get on a camel, you can make it about 30 days. Okay? And if you walk, you're still going to make it about 30 days. But what I'm saying is this, church, it was a long ways from home. Okay? And I looked up from New York City to Jerusalem, and you can fly in 11 hours and 55 minutes. Now, they're over 500 miles away from home. They're away from their parents. They're being indoctrinated. First of all, they're trying to change their diet. Okay? And then you find here they're in a position of authority. How many young people would like to be in a position of authority? At this time, they had three years to train them okay, before they come to this point. So they had three years of training. So they come to this point, and they might be no older than 21 here, okay? maybe 22 or something like that in a position of authority. And uh, now, they have the opportunity, nobody knows. I mean, everybody, everybody that you around there, all these other people from their land, they've done knelt down, and, and uh, they're worshiping this image as they was instructed to do so. Karen, will you stand up? Uh, Alex, will you stand up? I'm just calling out names. I know. Sandy, will you stand up? No, sit down until I tell you, okay? There's some names I know, okay? Now everybody look around. Does that stick out? Hey, if somebody's standing up and everybody's kneeling down, they're going to stick out. Okay? You may have a seat. Okay? But here, everybody else is falling down. They're worshiping this image. And here stands Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let me give you what their Hebrew's name was. Okay? Daniel, who kept that name, we read about it in the Bible, but they changed. And by the way, Daniel meant God is my judge. If you wanted to change somebody's viewpoint, if you wanted to change their religion, if you wanted to indoctrinate them with your culture, your religion, you start off with what? Changing their name. Changing their diet, okay? Changing the way they live. Indoctrinating them and teaching them. I think that's what's going on in our country, man. But Daniel means my God in judge. They change it to Belshazzar. Baal protects the king is what they change it. Well, we know Baal worship, okay, as, as I would worship. Then, you know, a lot of times we say Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Well, we don't really know the Hebrews name, do we? Well, Hananiah, the Lord is gracious. They changed it to Shadrach. Command or decree of a God called Ekra, servant of the moon god. Okay? So they had all kinds of gods and, and false images that they worship. Then we have my uh, Sheel, the Hebrew name for uh, uh, Hebrew name for uh, and I don't forgot the other name. Okay? Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach, okay? Uh, who is like the Lord? Who is like the Lord? So they took that name and change it. Who is like Elka? Okay. Then Zechariah, the Lord is my helper. They changed that to Abednego. So they started changing their names to try to change what they believe. Look with me in Scripture again, where we're at. In chapter 3, verse 12. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, 
and Abednego, these men. O king, have not, uh, O king, have not regarded thee. They have they thy servant, not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. As I had these three to stand up, they stood up. Okay, they didn't. They didn't kneel down. They didn't. They stood up. They they were recognized that they were not going to worship, even though the music played and and, and they were commanded to do so. Why did they stand up? Why did they stand up? They were taught at a young age the commandment of God. Thou shalt have no other gods before thee. Thou shalt not bow thyself to an image. Have no image set up. They were taught those things. And now they're standing for their God. They're standing for Jehovah. They're standing for what's right. Look in verse 13. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fear, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these three before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my God, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, O Nebuchadnezzar, Here's these three young men standing on the ground, standing for God. And King, they know Nebuchadnezzar is ruthless. They know that, that their life could be on the line. They realize that. But they're standing their ground. And oh, Nebuchadnezzar, and here's the way I like to think about it. Now, they were rulers. They were in his good favor. But now, he is angry. His fury, and he, he brings them before me and said, Now, Lord, I believe there's, there's a misunderstanding here. Maybe, maybe you didn't understand. Maybe you didn't hear the music. So he orders again that the music be played. He said, I'm going to give you another opportunity. I'm going to give you another opportunity. How many of us, if we were young, taken from our home, and being taught something contrary to what we had been taught, from a foreign land in a position of authority we're going to lose that authority how many of us would stand our ground? These are excellent examples of young people, are they not? Look with them if you will. He said in verse 15 he said, I'm like, what am I going to do boys? He said, I'm going to play the music again. All you got to do is just fall down. Just, just go ahead and do what you're told to do. Look with him in verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, The king to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not, uh, we are not, we are not careful to answer thee in this manner. If it be so, our God whom we serve. Who are they standing for? Who did they stand for? They stood for Jehovah. Is the God we serve is able to deliver us? Church, this, this evening, we don't know what we're going to face. You remember the shootings that they had in the churches? Remember those? You ever thought about this? And we thank God you know you have people here on patrol. But what if somebody comes to this church, or even in Walmart, or in your home? And what if they try to get you to say, Jesus Jesus is just a man. Your faith is vain. You're just wasting your time. Christianity ain't no good. All you got to do is just deny Jesus. What would you do? That's the position we're in, folks. That's the position we're in. Are we going to stand up and say, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Or are we going to compromise? These young men weren't willing to compromise. They knew the danger. They knew Nebuchadnezzar meant business. They knew he was ruthless. They knew that their life was on the line. But they said, it don't matter, King. God is able to deliver us. Let me say this too. They weren't rude in the done it either. We ought to stand our ground and we don't have to be rude. Amen? We don't have to be rude. We ought to stand for Christ, but we shouldn't be overbearing. 
You know, sometimes people look at us and they say, well, them Christians down there, you just, you just can't talk to them. You just can't reason with them. Well, some things we can compromise on them, or some things we can't. When it comes to the Word of God, when it comes to salvation, when it comes to Christ, when it comes to the virgin birth, when it comes to the things that the Scripture says are important, we need to stand on them. Amen. We need to stand on them. So he says, God is able to deliver us. Look at verse 18. But if not, be it known unto thee. They wasn't being rude. They just said, this is where we stand. This is where we stand. Be it known, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. You remember Peter when Jesus was being arrested and taken off. They were going to crucify him. And Peter was separated from Jesus. And there was three times that he asked Peter, said, you were with him. You were one of his disciples, weren't you? And the last one, I believe, was a young lady. He said, I don't know. I don't know this man. The Bible says they even said with a with a curse. I don't know this man. Jesus told him that he would do that, didn't he? Peter, you remember what Peter told Jesus? Lord, I will never deny you. Lord, I'll die before I deny you. We should never boast of what we're going to do. If somebody was to come into the church, if somebody was to say you're a liar, deny Jesus or you lie. I pray this. God help me to never compromise my faith in Christ. Amen. These young individuals was taken away from home. They was fed propaganda. They was in a position of thought they had it made, but they weren't going to compromise what they'd been taught at a young age. Folks, we have to stand up for Christ. We have to stand up for the faith. We have to stand up for the word of God. I must hurry. Verse 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. Oh boy, he got hot. And from uh, and the form of his vintage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was brought to uh, be heated. In other words, seven times harder than what it normally is. He was in a rage. He commanded it to. But I want to make sure I get rid of these fellows. They're troublemakers, okay? And let me look at verse 20 right quick. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army. What did he do? Bind them. Bind. You go down through there and we don't have time. He, it shows that they were tied up and that they were bound. And you remember these men that were taken, they was taking them to uh, to put them in the furnace. That It was so hot that they, they died themselves. Now look with me if you will. Verse 23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Why did they fall down in the fiery furnace? They were bound. And besides, they couldn't get them close enough to put them in there. They just kind of gave them a shove. They fell down in there. Now, you get the picture with me. They said this morning, the picture, they were bound. They were tied. They couldn't hold on to nothing. They, they couldn't hardly walk. Okay? They were bound. But now they went to the fiery furnace. Now, look with me, if you will, in verse 24. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished. I like this one. Amen. He was astonished. And rose up in haste. Here's the old king sitting back there, and he's watching them, and he, he, he knows his men have been killed, the best men he had been killed, put them in there. And now he's astonished. Wouldn't you be astonished? Notice it. Was astonished. And it tells us, and rose in haste, and spake and said unto his counsel. Did not we cast three men bound? 
Hey, I look down there. There's three men down there, right? He goes on to into the midst of all. They answered and said unto him, the king, true, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see how many men? Four. Four. Men, or are they? They're not bound. They're not suffering. They're not sweating. They're walking. Amen. Walking in the midst of the fog. And they have no hurt. And the fourth man, what is he like? It's the Son of God. The form of the fourth man is like the Son of God. We don't know what we're going to face. We might face all kinds of trials, all kinds of tribulations. Well, let me say this. When you stand up for Jesus, you'll stand with you. Right? Stand up for Jesus and you'll be standing with you. In the midst of the fire, he'll be there. In the midst of the fret, he'll be there. I like this. When death comes, he'll be there. Amen. Whatever we face, he'll be there. Notice now what took place. In verse 27, And the princes and the governors and the captains and the kings and the counselors being gathered together saw these men whose bodies before had no power, nor was a hair of her head singed. What is it? Neither were their coats charred, nor the smell of far had passed Folks, they didn't even smell like it'd been in a fall. What does God do? He can deliver you out of the fall, man. But if He don't choose to deliver us out of the fall, will we say, Lord, I'm going to do what you want me to do in me. Lord, I don't want no part of you. These young people, folks, they need to be taught that the Word of God more important than anything. You go back and you read the book of Deuteronomy, and it tells us over and over and over again in the Old Testament that we're to teach our children the things of God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were taught these things, and they stood. Will we stand for Christ? God help us to stand. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come here tonight. We realize, Lord, the message got scattered, but, Lord, I hope the gist of it went out. Lord, I pray that we, as believers, will never compromise the gospel. But, Lord, we'll stand up for it. Lord, my heart is heavy as I look around and see, Lord, churches that are compromising the gospel, compromising the word of God. Lord, young people, they don't know the Christ we know. And Lord, we pray that you'll reach them and teach them. And Lord, we just ask that as we go out this week, you'll help us to look for opportunities to share the gospel because it's the gospel of Christ that changes lives. And Lord, we'll give you the praise. For we ask it in Jesus' name. God bless you and thank you for your time. And I hope you have a good week. And Lord, I will come back Wednesday. We'll talk about the rock. Right? God bless you. Thank you.